I have the honor to, to speak about matches and climate data in Austria. As you, these are two more or less separate subjects, so there will be a, a little break in between because I will change to the next presentation. But so we have enough time to actually uh, to actually think over my first part of the presentation. Basic, basics first of all. There are various bodies and uh, locations of climate research in Austria. On one hand, climate data, on the other, climate impacts and how to handle them. All these, all these organizations join in a climate exchange center, which is still in process, not yet set up entirely. What might be interesting for you, if you actually, whenever there were in the past, you actually needed data from Austria, in the future you will have a centralized database where you can obtain the information necessary. For the moment, we need, you will need insider knowledge, and so I can be helpful also now with my presentation. What kind of data? What kinds of data set do we actually have? In the past, we have the time series from the stations, and on a larger scale, I mean that all what is measured, all data measured. Then we have gridded data set and client model realizations, model runs, as well as reanalyses, which I will skip. For the future, of course, we only have climate model outputs. There are a lot of data sets, as you can see from this listing, and I can only use examples, not only selected by the central by the, by the research center, but in any way, if you need further information, you can uh, address my person or the exchange center. In two presentations, we already heard about homogen, homogeneous data set and homogenization, and I'd like to uh, tell you more about it. We have time series from stations. Stations are uh, relocated for any reasons whatsoever. Uh, sometimes it's because of construction measures, new buildings, or the property is sold where the location was installed. So there are various reasons why a station changes its location. And then, of course, the, this will have an impact on the measured data because there's another ambience and environment. When looking at the time series, we have in this graph, we can see that there's a certain problem in between. In 1977, this station actually was relocated, changed is, was changed, moved to another location. It's not very uh, good, of course, for the stability of the data sets. And that is why during the past few years, statistical methods have been developed to change the time series in order to have a correlation to the former place. So the actual conditions are adjusted to what would have been the case if it had not been relocated, so we have now the curve after statistical adaptation adjustment, then we can of course use further data. This is not summer now, this is the annual temperature. In red color we see the original time series. Oh. There's another pointer now. Okay, doesn't work. Here we see again this, this sharp bend in between, which is not, this does not match the, the other curves without relocation. And the green curve is the homogenized station, 
klimatologische Verhalten zeigt, wie die Showing now the same climatologic behavior das heißt as the other stations and the ambience. This has an impact on the time series. Now frost anschauen. days over haben a year. Left hand side we have the original the data. On the right hand side the homogenized the data. The axes are difficult das heißt, to see but it's now identical. We see a steep slope, a steep decrease on the left hand side but less slope on the right hand side. Was haben wir jetzt? Also an homogenisierten Stationenreihen haben wir jetzt in Österreich sowohl yeah, Monatsdaten als auch Homogenized Station Time Series, both day data and uh, in terms of temperature um, minimum, maximum and daily uh, precipitation totals. For the moment we are looking into humidity, whether we see uh, sharp bends and whether it's possible um, to homogenize those data. The but the time series is not all, but also radio probe time series are necessary, which are collected by the Institute for Meteorology and Geophysics, the University and the ECMWF, ETH Zurich and UK Met Office. Such data is used and Currently, they are working on a software allowing Was to do homogenization. What is important also for Austria is snow and glaciers. We measure snow levels on a monthly basis. Since 1909, the volume changes have been um, Determined, meanwhile with laser scans, formerly photogrammetry, mass balance measurements were made, have been made since 1980. From the and since the polar year, the international polar year, we have also uh, studies, in, uh, observations in northeast Greenland. The glacial discharge has been monitored since 2002 and we are now in process of developing glacial hydrological models to represent the changes. You see the picture here, we see two different time series, the melting down of glaciers, discharge, the three lines we see at the glacier tip, which is uh, colored. We have an outer line, a contour line, which shows the stretch, the extension of the glacier in 1969 and 1998 for the other line more in the middle and the black line shows 2012 boundaries. The colors that you see show the melting down of height, of elevation, because formerly we saw uh, only the surface area, now also the thickness. We see that the time uh, scales are not the same, so meters per year, uh, however, is the extent. In the first period, we see a maximum of two or three meters, and in the last period, seven to eight meters per year. So this volume change, the thickness change, does not only occur in the outer discharge tip of the glacier, but also in the body mass. Phenology has already been a topic. We have 90 stations forming a monitoring network. Various plants are uh, monitored on a regular basis. 10 agricultural, 6 fruit, 25 wild plants. There are gaps in between, but over the last few years we see a continuous series of measurements. We measured wine in diverse abbeys and uh, uh, chronicles. We looked into the past in order to be able to extend the time series into the past. This is part of an OIMETnet project, PEP 725, 29. An international database on a European scale is available. Als Beispiel für andere Proxy-Daten hier von der For other proxy data, here we have as, uh, some data 
from uh, Innsbruck University three annulus back thousand, uh, more than thousand years into the past and we're looking into the top picture with the green and red curves. There we see the temperature calculations we made and a deviation from the mean value on red is the measured data. We see it's quite a good match. On the right hand side, the graph, we see that this curve is not only valid for the actual location where it was collected, but it actually fits well into the global European scale, you see, and the correlation is about uh, 0.6. Es gibt dann auch noch die Datenbank Histolp, von der vielleicht manche von Ihnen schon Database, you may have heard about this Sie already. Monatsdaten uh, it collects monthly data also for a larger alpine region, region which ca you can see on the right hand side in the Sie map. Also you see the stations Daten, spread there, not only Austria, but also uh, stations installed in the neighboring countries belonging to the Alps. All these data all this data is homogenized temperature, uh, Und diese Daten kann precipitation man pressure and sunshine also hours and it can be downloaded, this map can be downloaded and also the data can be obtained. Möchte hier dann auch gleich überleiten zu den I like to come to the gridded data set because uh, some of this data can be found for temperature and precipitation on the Histol his database. Every year is updated. The data, uh, data sets are um, uh, updated regularly, but this data is uh, the status of 2008. We want to homogenize the time series. Last time it was 2004. And more than 10 years of data have come, have, have been added. And once we have homogenized all the data, then we will renew the picture in the internet. As to the gridded data sets, there are various approaches available. One uh, way is to have fixed stations, which are identical over the entire period, in order, and then we will have consistent, comparable patterns over time, very good for your evaluations. Or you can say, I always use the optimum of the stations available, then we will have the best possible map for each point of time, but for the chronolo chronology, we, have, we will have to be careful and exercise caution and there might be deviations uh, which is just an outlier and not actually well integrated. There are various analytic approaches, there are various people uh, producing maps and the maps are different from one person to the other but we hope that it will they will match in the end. Um, here geht es um einen a short example, temperature data set, one kilometer resolution. Three weeks ago it was presented by the central agency, starting in 1961, temperature maxima and minima, and, and deviation from a climatological mean value, and they are continued on a day-to-day -day basis and will then be published in, on the website, but it's still in process. Other bodies and institutions also produce gridded data sets. For example, Vienna University, here we have three hour resolution, fields of parameters that might not be well understandable by man in the street, potential temperature or equipotential temperature. Time range uh, between 1971 to 2005. For climate model data, we have the international project, which you all know, Eurocortex, for example. Or Ensemble. There was also was an Austrian project with the contributors you see on the right hand side as logos. 
for models to be created, climate data for Austria and the Alpine region in the neighborhood. These sets of data are available on the website. You see here, there you ha can have a look at them, but for a download you will have to register as a user, but normally you have access. Urban climate evaluations are made at present. We use the MUKLIMO 3 from DWD as a model. Graz, Linz, Salzburg, Klagenfurt, Vienna are the cities which are monitored with uh, environmental um, input also in order to see the distribution within the city in comparison with the closer environment. There's also an information portal, climate change, Klimawandel, where we try to uh, visualize climate, to make it understood by the people, what is climate, what is is it influenced by there are various sample data sets and visualizations of data which can be watched, looked at by visitors. This website uh, has been published, meanwhile, uh, in book form. This is the climate data part of my presentation. To Metges. Metges. Metges is a Metges in German. This is a combined meteorological and geographic information system with special focus on hilly or mountainous area. The colleague, the name of the colleague you read here is the one who wanted or was intended to hold uh, this presentation, so I'm, uh, I replace him and so I cannot, I, it may be possible that I cannot answer all of your questions in case you have. We have here a system which allows us to use model data and downscale the data to uh, geographical local resolutions. It, it, it can be used worldwide because of the normalized uh, data format with a user interface by 2005. It was developed on a worldwide scale in USA, Switzerland, Peru, Japan, South America. But uh, since 2000 or from 2006 onward, it was the University of Vienna where it was uh, developed and extended within various international research projects and starting in 2013, it's now a spin-off, a Metges um, private company. What is it in detail? We see that global and regional models are used, both projections, uh, and climate models, then uh, downscaling takes place with a 30 meter resolution and in the end you have uh, graphical ways to visualize it. And since 2006, 2007 we have a web interface for visitors and people interested. What are the models used so far, which a data format is a necessary grip file and normally can be used, GFS, WRF, MM5, and the ETA model uh, can be used, we are used. This is an example of the anal analysis of uh, new snow. On the left hand side we see all the parameters we can actually set, continents, states, districts, so uh, all scales, even uh, uh, streets, rivers, streams, when zooming into the picture we see that we, we have also the option to select the data and the period for which we want to make the forecast. 
diese Web-Oberfläche, wo einfach die Daten viermal täglich abgedatet werden. Es where the data is updated four times a day. Gibt, there are 200 prediction areas, also eight languages are, are finden, offered, so normally everybody here in the room should find one language he or she understands. Area uh, projections, so points, projections Gebiete and profile forecasts can be made when clicking Further, we see North Germany, wenn man registriert ist, mehr sehen kann. the registered, registered user can see more, but however, precipitation and temperature can al already be inspected. Wurde hier noch abgeschätzt eine Then we have an estimate of the probability of air temperatures lower than 5 degrees Celsius on a, based on a seven-year period. Of predictions. And where uh, forecasts were made uh, regarding the frequency of air temperatures below the set temperatures. And many thanks for your attention. Or many thanks for having cut down and so that we are now good in time. Any questions for our speaker? Uh, yeah. uh, I appreciate your presentation, but I would like to know your philosophy with, with homogenization of daily data. Let's say rainfalls. How do you treat those uh, suspicious uh, values? Uh, would, you, would you comment that, please? Um, especially in um, rainfall, uh, there is not too many breaks that, breaks that can be found with the methods we used. So it's the, um, we did some um, adjustments, but only using uh, seasonal values. So we didn't really use a daily adjustment, but used the same adjustment for each day in the season. Because we know that it's a very uncertain thing, especially in precipitation. So. Okay, then. Um, Sie wollen selber eine Frage stellen oder wollen Sie das Mikro? Das ist Richter. You have a question on your own. Yeah, if, if I may. Many thanks. It's a very. I see that you have. A, you presented a, a wide pool of possibilities to collect data and, uh, and as to uh, policy makers and administrative decision makers do they actually use the data and are they used uh, to change policy or to uh, take measures i know that in germany the federal ministry for the environment actually started uh, intensive research over a certain period and as we can see that there are no actual consequences in terms of practical implementation. In Austria the case is that we have a rule or regulation that the federal states, the individual states, have to look at their adjustments, what they find important and projects are, in, are being started for each of the Austrian federal states, especially for the spheres of action um, which were actually adopted by the administrative decision makers on the spot. For the moment, there is a general statement as to the consequences, but how to implement that in each of the fields of action, I think it's just, it's just a starting point for the moment. So that's current status. I have got another question, many thanks. No, no, not so, not so fast. Sie haben ja am Anfang auch diese gegitterten Datensätze yeah. vorgestellt. You also, also, you also spoke about gridded data, larger scale, smaller scale, uh, also for Europe. The geostatistical measures behind are which? 
Also beim Histolp selber hat man davon ausgegangen, also dass es eine die started out from the climatologie from the point of view that climatology is highly variable, but due to the high number of stations we have, we can we have good data. Relativ glatt verteilt sind, also auch with a very good distribution, smooth distribution, and even with a reduced number of stations, we have a good correlation. And so we selected a combination of uh, climatological fields and individual fields, which we combined to a global picture. The Vienna um, University system uses a spline function with a penalty criterion and, in addition, a fingerprint. And the fingerprint is a system in which previous knowledge is used to create a fields to have um, a typical day, for example, a cold, high-pressure zone in the Alpine region, and later on we verify if we can find this signal in the data actually measured.